Hi, my name is Sarah Bauman. I am currently a postdoctoral researcher at the Graduate School of Public Health in the Department of Behavioral and Community Health Sciences. Water was fetched, clothes hung to dry, steaming cups of chia were shared, and lavender colored buds were blossoming in the noonday sun. In the shaded quaint courtyard outside of June's home, the smell of just cut onions and homemade samosas filled the air. It was just before lunchtime in Nagarkot, Nepal. You cannot imagine how much destruction can happen in 60 seconds, said June's mother on what happened next. Her life literally crumbled around her and beneath her as she embraced June and watched the great earthquake steal her home, her husband, and her dreams. Homes collapsed, but rubble is being cleared. Fear is still present, but stories are being shared. Hospitals are destroyed, but the community lends a hand. Tears fall, but comfort is exchanged. Hunger is real, but neighbors share rice. Families have been torn apart, but people are coming together. Dreams vanished, but they are being restored. Though June has lost, he has also overcome. His namaste greeting to all who pass by remind us that Nepal will find relief. There is hope in the coming days. There is hope in June. These are the words that I put on paper just days after living through the terrifying experience of the ground shaking beneath my feet and buildings crumbling around me. I was living in Nepal when the 7.9 magnitude earthquake struck on April 15th, 2015. I had been living there for over a year and it was my home. The quake killed close to 9,000 people and displaced a half a million. In the aftermath, ancient temples collapsed and villages were flattened. And while this devastation occurred in less than 60 seconds, it felt like hours and the effects of the earthquake have lingered within families and communities over the years. In addition to physical destruction, there was so much loss, stress, and fear. I too felt the negative impacts on my mental health. As one of the lucky ones who escaped to tell the story, the earthquake has left a deep scar in the form of post-traumatic stress. I'd like you to imagine a time in your life when you felt like things were out of your control. The structures around you could crumble at any moment. In the very ground beneath your feet, the one thing that you could always count on is now shaking, phys physically or figuratively speaking. What did you do to cope and calm yourself after that experience? The poem I shared represents my coping technique. And while I didn't realize it at the time, I turned to the art form of writing and reflection as one way to wrestle and cope with what I had experienced. And I wasn't alone. In the days, months, and years following the Nepal earthquake, many forms of community art rose from the rubble in the form of urban murals, spoken word poetry, sacred art, and so much more. Looking back on this experience over the years, I became intrigued by this phenomena of artists and communities coming together to salvage ancient artifacts or create murals with messages of hope. I wondered, can art improve mental health and support communities? I'm a global public health researcher. Building on my training and experience in the field, I decided to work with my colleagues in the US and Nepal to dig deeper into the role of public art in the wake of disasters and trauma. We wanted to better understand the mechanisms at work. We wondered what role is community art playing in the lives of people who have experienced tremendous loss and pain? Can art bring people together and restore community? Today, I'd like to persuade you that art heals. But first, what does the existing research tell us? Post-earthquake mental health research in Nepal found an increase in depression, elevated levels of anger, hazardous drinking, and suicidal thoughts. And we know that post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD, is often the most reported adverse psychological after effect among survivors of natural disasters. In fact, 10 months after the earthquake, PTSD was prevalent among 24% of survivors, a significant mental health burden, 
which was particularly high among older women and those who are illiterate. From other work, we know that the arts can have profound positive impacts on health outcomes, such as stress levels, emotions, social cohesion, and health behaviors. Research from around the world has found that writing, painting, drawing, dance, and music have all demonstrated significant positive health effects, such as promoting healthy behaviors and reducing stress. For example, in Philadelphia, public murals and storytelling have been used to address suicide stigma. The project led to increased awareness, reduction of stigma, and promoted community recovery. We also know that art as a tool for relief and coping has a long history of evidence in the field of art therapy, which has been used clinically for more than a century. In the specific context of post-disaster mental health, there have been a number of initiatives around the world that have embraced art as a form of therapy and community building. For example, art and creative interventions among refugee populations, such as this one, have used photography in refugee camps. And these have led to decreases in anxiety, depression, PTSD, and peer problems. Research also suggests that art can influence social variables that indirectly affect health, such as social support, social cohesion, solidarity, and a sense of collective self in society. Community-based art initiatives also have the power to promote personal growth and citizen participation. I'm sure many of us remember engaging with the beautiful imagery and creative messaging that encouraged folks to get out and vote during the 2020 election. But despite all that I shared, relatively little is known about the role of community art or public art and its potential impact on health in post-traumatic or emergency contexts. Building upon my relationships in Nepal, my team and I designed a study to explore this specific area. By community art, we mean any form from murals to music to religious paintings that is embedded and freely accessible in public and community spaces, such as town squares or streets. In our study, we included murals, performing art, arts such as Buddhist ritual dance, visual arts, design, spoken word poetry, sculpture, graphic novels, and more. We considered artwork created by a single artist or through a joint effort, such as collaborative projects between artists and communities. Through qualitative interviews with 19 artists, we uncovered three key ways that community art impacts health, cohesion, and resilience in the context of post-earthquake Nepal. The first is relief. So community art offers a method for coping and healing. Artists described feelings of comfort in the process of creating community art, which allowed for reflection and a way of escaping the pain of the present situation. A writer talked about the power of poetry as a tool to ease the mind and express themselves. But you don't necessarily have to be an artist yourself to reap the benefits of the arts. We discovered the potential for community art to offer relief to community members, even if they're consuming or observing the art. For example, a traditional religious Palba painter that you see here in this image said, by looking at my painting, I hope people get peace. And for a moment, they forget themselves and be present in the painting and appreciate what is there. The second impact of art on community cohesion was through communication. The artists we spoke with viewed community art as a communication tool to promote connections and encourage conversation and even share messages of hope. A mural artist discussed how creating a public mural offered a starting point for conversation, where he saw people coming together and talking after the earthquake using a tool like street art. In other examples, community art projects were created with the explicit goal of promoting communication and conversation after the earthquake. A graphic artist discussed how he used a comic book that could lead people to comprehend how sudden and disastrous an earthquake can be and help to change social and political priorities. The third benefit of community art was its role as a promoter of community cohesion. 
art was also viewed as a way to create common ground and unite participants, which ultimately encouraged discussion and the creation of safe physical and emotional spaces. A conservation architect discussed the process of conserving and protecting sacred art and artifacts after the destruction of temples in the earthquake. These art forms serve as an important part of community identity. He described the scene of the destroyed town square just hours after the earthquake, where people started to come together and they wanted to help. The community members came forward and helped to pick up the artifacts, and within five or six days, everything was moved to a safe place. The physical contribution of participating in and preserving sacred art and artifacts helped the community members maintain a sense of purpose. It encouraged them to work together to preserve and ultimately rebuild important symbols of their heritage. While the community members were not involved in creating the temples, the act of coming together for the sake of preserving community art and artifacts provided the community an opportunity to rebuild. Considering the growing impacts of climate change, which make natural disasters even more likely, communities urgently require post-disaster coping methods. What our findings from Nepal suggest is that art is so much more powerful in communities than we realized. In summary, community art can support with coping, communication, and community cohesion. What is particularly interesting about the role of art is its way to provide relief and its way that the art was embraced as a grassroots tool by local artists. The community initiated approaches uncovered in our study serve as powerful examples of the role of indigenous art and local community movements. Localized creative movements are a tremendous asset that we have yet to systematically embrace for improving public health. This also highlights that public health strategies and international development initiatives may benefit from developing stronger ties with grassroots artists and movements that utilize local art to promote health. Notably, these findings are not just limited to Nepal or just to post-earthquake settings. Once we start looking, we can see in our day-to-day -day lives just how art has been harnessed as a community building and coping tool. For example, a recent COVID-19 study conducted in the UK found that people who spent 30 minutes or more during the pandemic on arts-related activities, such as reading for pleasure, listening to music, or engaging in a creative hobby, reported lower levels of depression, anxiety, and greater life satisfaction. George Floyd murals have also been created across the nation to cope with the pain and historical violence associated with systemic racism and police brutality. What I'd like to leave you with is this. There is a great opportunity to harness the power of art to restore communities, especially in post-disaster and traumatic contexts. And my hope is that we will consider investing in and engaging with the arts to support mental health needs, especially after disasters. Whether it be a massive earthquake, a pandemic, or violence and historical pain, the arts can offer even more than just activism and aesthetics. They can heal. Thank you. <laughs>